Hi, my name is Patrick Cozy. I'm a graphics developer at Analytical Graphics, and today I want to talk about Cesium, a JavaScript library for creating 3D globes and 2D maps in the browser. Uh, this is actually being pre-recorded for the JSGEO conference, so check those guys out at jsgeo.com. Uh, so Cesium is an open source JavaScript library. It's built using WebGL, so we can get very good performance in the browser because uh, a lot of the work that's being done is being pushed onto the hardware, onto the video card. Uh, about three and a half years ago at AGI, we were looking for ways to do a cross-platform uh, 3D globe. We considered uh, working with some existing C++ and C# -sharp code that we had, uh, but at that time, WebGL was just coming out, and we looked at it and said, "Well, geez, not only could we do cross-platform visualization here, but we could also run the web browser, so we have no install, uh, no plugin, just bring up a web page, and there's hardware accelerated 3D graphics." We thought that was really compelling, uh, so we started building Cesium, and we worked on it internally for maybe a little over a year, and then it's been open source on GitHub for, for over two years now. And here I am at the main website, cesiumjs.org, and I'm going to do this video in two parts. In the first part, uh, I'm going to go through some of the major features of Cesium using Sandcastle, which is an online IDE, and I'm just going to point out the big, the big features and show you some examples. And then I'm going to do a second video. We're going to go a little deeper into the code, and we're going to write a small application to load different types of geospatial data. So from the website here, I'm going to go down to this live coding link. And this brings up Sandcastle. And this is an online IDE. Along the bottom here, we see a bunch of different examples for using the Cesium API and what it's capable of. And the top left is a code window that has uh, syntax highlighting. And on the right side is the actual Cesium widget. So in this case, we're just doing a Hello World application. So in one line of code, we create the Cesium Viewer widget, and we get the globe we see here on the right. So I'm going to do this open a new window, and now I got a bigger view of the of the same app. And let's take a look at what's going on. So just to start, I have a globe. I can kind of spin it around. It has some inertia. It has an atmosphere around the side. It has those stars in the distance, and I have this UI. It all comes as part part of Cesium. So I'm going to use a geocoder and zoom in to Portland. And we're streaming high resolution imagery just like you would see uh, in any 2D map. The big difference here is I can tilt. And when I tilt, I can see way out in the distance and I get high resolution imagery nearby, lower resolution in, in the distance, and Cesium handles all of that for you. You just give it a URL. So one of the many popular open standards for streaming imagery like TMS, WMS, Big Maps, OpenStreetMap, and so on. And we'll do all, all the details. I can grab the sky and kind of look around. Let's zoom back out. Uh, so in addition to doing the imagery, we also do terrain. So one benefit of 3D over 2D is I can really get to see the, the mountains. So I'm going to turn on terrain. And then zoom to one of my favorite test areas, which is Seneca Rocks. This is a place I used to rock climb a lot. And if I zoom down, there's this fin sticking out of the ground. And this is a cliff that a lot of people rock climb. And here I'll go right to the tip of it and kind of look out in the distance all around. And out here is where the campground was. So I can zoom down there and just explore the full terrain. And there's camera intersection here too, so I can't go under the terrain. And you'll see we have mouse control, but we also have touch as well. And WebGL support on mobile is, is getting quite good, and I think maybe in the next three to nine months it's going to be uh, fantastic. Um, so down the bottom here, we see uh, animation controls. One thing we do at AGI is we do a lot of time dynamic visualization, so we're interested in uh, and time being built in from the start for Cesium. Uh, so here we have the timeline, and then we have the playback widget. And what I'm going to do is switch on the water layer. So this way we can kind of better see. And I'll speed it up a little more. And this way we can see the uh, the sun moving along as it's you can see kind of the, the light and dark here. There you go. And then speaking of the water layer, let's zoom in to San Francisco. And you can see we have anywhere uh, when we turn on this layer, we have animated water. And this is exciting because it's all done 
on the GPU, so it's still very fast, even though it's JavaScript, it's really uh, using WebGL, so it's all in the video card to do that animation fast. Cool, so let's jump back to Sandcastle, and we'll spend a few minutes uh, looking at some of, some of the major features inside Cesium. So in addition to the train imagery, we also do 3D models. Uh, these are using a format called GLTF, which is an open standard that the Kronos group is working on. And these are models that are optimized for the web. It's a combination of JSON and binary data, so it can be loaded, loaded and rendered very quickly. Uh, Cesium does billboards. You might see these called place marks or markers and other applications, but the idea is we can put images and lots of images, thousands of them, uh, on the globe. Uh, there's, cam there's camera control, so for example, we could fly uh, to different places, like here we'll fly to San Diego. Um, or we can view in any type, in any customly defined reference frame, which at AGI we do this quite a bit if we want to view in the reference frame of a satellite or ground vehicle or something like that. Uh, we support, we're working on getting more and more formats supported. Right now we have GeoJSON and TopoJSON. And here's some custom rendering where we're looking at the properties of the data, and here we're extruding based on population. And there's a large library. If you don't want to use one of our loaders directly, you can go to a lower level in Cesium and create geometries yourself. Here you see polygons, polygons with holes, extruded polygons, uh, circles, ellipses, boxes, spheres, uh, corridors, walls, lines, you name it, with all sorts of visual effects on them as well. And it's possible to add new geometry types. Um, one thing I'm particularly excited about is we're working on a, an open JSON schema called CZML, the CZM language, that is the, a way to do data-driven visualization in Cesium. So this is for, uh, you create the data, you create the JSON file, and then you just load it in Cesium and kind of your entire application, or a lot of your application can be just generating that file and you write very little client-side code. Here, we have we just loaded a CZML file and a few satellites that we computed uh, in our desktop application called SDK. And now I can jump on, for example, this Manaya orbit, and I'll speed it up a little bit. And I can watch it, uh, <coughs> watch it animate. I can slow it down, go zoom to the AGI location. I'm going to go home. One cool thing about this particular app is it shows off another feature in Cesium, which is Cesium is not just 3D. Uh, it also does 2D. And then same deal. You can zoom in. You can spin it around all the kind of standard stuff you'd expect in 2D. Then we also do a Columbus view, which is a fun 2.5D view. And particularly this Manaya orbit is pretty cool because you can get on it and now I'll speed it up and you can watch it as it changes, drastically changes altitude going up and down. Okay, so for, for other features, um, in addition to the billboards, we also have labels. You can add text, you can combine uh, the labels and the billboards together. And those are really the major features. So in the second video, we'll come back and we'll write a small application uh, right here in Sandcastle. Thank you.